Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. So, the primary thing Satan seeks to steal is your spiritual understanding but it is not the only thing he steals when he captures your capacity to receive and understand the word he can now begin to met out like an octopus touching every area of your life suddenly your finances collapses suddenly your health collapses suddenly your relationships collapse suddenly ministry cannot rise and when you go to sleep, God begins to give you signs that at the back of the calamities that seem to befall you, among the many explanations is that there are demonical forces assigned. Now, please look at me. Listen to me. There are demonic spirits assigned to all men once you are alive. Once you pass through the womb of a woman, Satan does not wait till you are saved. Once you are alive, you are a potential threat to his program. And there are spirits assigned to you. Number two, when you get saved, that translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, that one, you are now an open threat to Satan's program. There are spirits assigned to every believer, demonic spirits, with the singular assignment of frustrating your spiritual growth and efficiency and ultimately aborting God's prophetic program over your life. Are we together? When you now find purpose and answer the call, especially that you are called into the fivefold ministry, there is a special assigning of spirits. They don't follow you, they follow the office. There are spirits that don't attack individuals. They attack mantles, anointings, and offices. So whoever becomes the carrier of that grace, it is the reason why God does not waste impartation. He mandates that you have a certain level of spiritual knowledge before certain anointings rest on you. Because you can have the anointing, but can you defend the attacks that follow that anointing? If you are Elijah, Jezebel is coming. That's for sure. If you are Samson, Delilah is coming. You must have the technology to protect the anointing. And that happens by light. The reason why many of you received certain impartations and it was a waste is because you were in an atmosphere of genuine impartation. But by growth, you had not risen to a level of spiritual illumination that brought profit to your impartation. So God would rather allow the grace to be dormant until light comes like hiding Moses in Egypt because if you are attacked in ignorance you will die <laughs> I hope you are learning this is also the reason why sometimes I hope you know that not every stuntedness and every delay is demonic even though I'm teaching on demons there are many, many, many stuntedness, levels of stuntedness in our lives that is caused by God himself. It is an act of mercy to keep you so that you are not destroyed. There are certain doors God will not open for you in ministry. The, the, the kind of attack versus your ignorance, you will fall in such a way that will become a disaster to the body of Christ. So God himself will limit your growth and connect you to a source of true light. When you rise, he will open the door by himself. Listen, God does not only open doors, he closes doors. Who closed the door of the ark? Talk to me. Who closed the door of the ark? He closed it not to limit them. He closed it for safety. Everything that was inside was restrained, but it was safe. Listen, that is the reason why the Bible says, number one, to give thanks. When you do not understand whether it is demonic or, or whatever, you are mandated to give thanks because there are many things you do not understand. 
Father, with this kind of anointing, I should be running 10, 15 churches. And you apply for visa endlessly and you will not get it. Even while you are fasting. It's not always demonic. God has seen the tendency in your heart. The only way to get your attention is this version of you. If you rise without his help, he may not get you again. So he will keep you there until the day you hear teachings like this. Then even without praying for you, you will see certain doors open. Because it's not that God could not lift you. I hope you understand what I'm teaching you. It's true. So there are spirits assigned to men, spirits assigned, demonic spirits now, to believers, spirits assigned to those who have found purpose, especially directly serving the purposes of the kingdom. Then, there are spirits assigned to men who have been uniquely elected by God to represent certain unique expressions of his speakings per season, per time. So it doesn't matter who you are. Once you are here listening to me, I tell you by the authority of scripture, there is something in Satan's plan with your name on it. They don't have to take your name to the coven. Your name is already there. Not at the coven. The, the devil is aware you are there. You think he doesn't know you are there? Not with the kind of prophecy on your head. I hope you know that when God is building you, the realm of the spirit is watching too. He's seen the prophet forming. The devil knows what that prophet will do. He's seen the apostle rising. He's seen Deborah rising. He's seen Esther rising. He's, every week you are receiving the word in church. It's not only you who is coming to church. Satan comes where God is too. That's how he steals. Where else will he get what to steal? Hallelujah. But very quickly so that we will pray. It is true that the Bible lets us know we are not alone. It is true that the Bible lets us know that anything that can glorify God becomes Satan's project to attack it and destroy it. That means if Satan sees the gateway church rising, flourishing, make no mistakes about it, he will not fold his arms. No, sir. That you are here now Listening. This is not to plant fear, but it's the truth. He knows that among all your family members, you are the most serious Christian. He knows the implication of what you are hearing now. He knows the effect that you are about to end an age-long captivity that has tied ladies, that has tied men, that have tied people in your family. My brother, he will not fold his arms. No. Every time Satan attacks one man, he's attacking a nation in one man now I'm giving you explanation as to why you are saying apostle why wouldn't he allow it looks like my life is always under attack it's a description of the glory he has seen that you have not seen hallelujah listen to me I wish I had the time I would have told you a bit of my story there is no great man today you see who has been helped by God and shown mercy that did not have a testimony of brutal demonic attacks. Satan can see. In the realm of the spirit there are secrets but not like it is on earth. Many things that are secrets on earth if you are open to the spirit they are not secrets again. There are angels that signify greatness and demon spirits can see it. There are stars that signify greatness and demons can see it. They know that this is a child of destiny. They know that this is a woman of prophecy. Listen, if Satan killed children in the days of Moses and killed children, babies, in the days of Jesus, he doesn't even spare to let you grow. He will attack anything. No wonder he does not want to allow you to have a child. It's not about barrenness. He knows how you will train that child. He already knows what that child becomes. Listen, I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. Nothing happens in the realm of the spirit to the saints for the fun of it. Satan is too serious to take you personal. He's looking at an agenda bigger than you. 
you think it's about your family it's not about your family it's about God's program and the contribution of your family to that program why is he attacking your brother because there is a prophet in that stubborn child and he would rather that child not come to church any other person can go but not this one It is the reason why it is good to invite people to church. You don't know how you are cooperating with heaven. Cooperating with a family. My brother, can we go to church? And heaven says, thank God. There is a man who has come into partnership. And he sits there like some of you now were invited for this program. And whilst you are hearing this, the spirit of God finally found you after 10 years. Demons are real. Spirits are real. They attack ministries. They attack businesses. They attack everything that can be attacked. They attack marriages. They attack pastors. Listen, let me speak with all due respect to servants of the living God here. I think the average man of God is not aware of the program of hell to destroy your life and your ministry if you let him. He will fight your integrity. He will fight your consecration. He will fight your character. He will fight your helpers. Are we together? So the first young man to be a graduate in a family, rejoicing to go and collect his certificate, is knocked down by a car and he dies. It's not about the boy dying. It's about seeing that 11 people will rise because when he sends a word to Jacob, he lights upon Israel. My sister, the reason why the devil seems to make sure any good man who comes around your life is as if you will fight and fight. And you are saying, is it that I'm a black sheep? You are not a black sheep. There is a signification on your destiny. While you were praying and say, Lord, I dedicate my womb to have children that will fear you. Satan had that prayer too. It was not only angels. That I make up my mind, I will keep myself. Satan had it too. And he says, all right, you have drawn the line. Hmm. That you have vowed as a man of God that you will not compromise. You will do ministry with integrity. And Satan says, all right, let's see. But the Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes, always causes us to triumph. But like I taught you, it is one thing to see victory from God's standpoint. It is another to understand the dynamics of making it your experience. Now let me tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen, behind the many nasty calamities that have plagued many of us and that has brought many of us to church this night, are demon spirits let me tell you this it's an uncomfortable truth but be wise enough to understand now demons are not the only reason for the calamity of the saints there are many other factors ignorance laziness inaction lack of faith all of these are factors but the role demons play don't downplay it and don't let any man trivialize it you only trivialize it if you have knowledge Satan will kill anything in your life if allowed. Steal anything in your life if allowed. Are we together? Destroy anything in your life if allowed. By the mercies of God, I have seen demon spirits. I have seen all kinds of spirits in my life and in my visions. I know demons are real. I have seen the disaster they met on people. I've been to the hospitals. I've seen sicknesses. I've seen mysterious situations that a woman gets married and gets pregnant and while she's sleeping she will tell you a stranger came to molest her and the next thing she sees blood and it's called miscarriage machines cannot diagnose that the problem started from the realm of the spirit a man who gets blessed just when 10 million, 20 million arrives and he's happy, hoping to take care of his family. They just say his most cherished person has cancer somewhere and it will require 30 million to treat the person. Just when the money finishes, the person dies. How about stupid?
students that will conduct tutorial for others and then at their final exam they blank out with no explanation and everybody says no you are not you are not dull and the individual says I've done my best I'm not talking about laziness and giving excuses with demons demons are real they oppress people I've seen people lose weight and you get to the hospital blood fine sugar level fine blood pressure fine you can't explain but they are dying I know men and women of God who are people of integrity they will not compromise but they will never experience increase the day somebody comes another person carries a bad news that scatters the work listen I'm saying this to you because shortly we are going to be praying as you see an area in your life that requires the power of God don't keep quiet get angry this night and say father it is time for things to work there is one thing I know about Satan he's a stubborn spirit just because God said it does not mean he will obey obedience must be compelled by engaging the word Hallelujah. There are families that never seem to prosper. Never seem to prosper. The men are like women and the women are like men. Responsible, able-built men. But they cannot do anything. It's the women that feed the men. It's the wife that feeds the husband. The house was built by the wife. The car was bought by the wife. And the man is not lazy. Nothing he does prospers. The first day he bought his car, that was the day he went to hit somebody somewhere. These things you call coincidences are intentional demonic orchestrations. The wind is blowing in this place. We're going to be praying soon. I'm saying like a whirlwind. This is what I'm seeing, like a whirlwind across the congregations. I'm about to be saying something now, and there is a mighty deliverance that will happen here. Mighty. This is why you came. It's time to be set free. It's time to be set free. Alantos Salike Pelakosia. Rade malako sabrade, sabalada balaka taba taba dash. Rati lako pareno sabrade kedi alaba. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We are going to pray, but there are eleven. I'm seeing one, one, eleven people right now as I speak. Please, if there are ushers, I want you to bring these 11 people out by the spirit there is a strong hand of God that is coming upon 11 people and the Lord is telling me it is for the sake of their families not just for them for the sake of their families bring them out bring them out Blessed is he, whether you're an usher or not, if someone is under the anointing with you, please bring them out. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Shalandele keparene keparato sobrasht. No, just those under the anointing. Bring them out. There's a reason we'll be seated shortly, but I want you to bring them out. Hello, Imadona.
Bring them out. I'm seeing a door that is closed. And the Lord is telling me to open that door. That is a door of someone's destiny that has been closed for many years. I speak by the spirit of prophecy. That door opens now. Ephata. Be open. Be open. Be open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there someone with a name? A berry. I'm hearing a name, a berry. Come. I know the lion, I know the lamb, I know the lion, I know the lamb, I believe in the lion, I believe in the lamb, hallelujah, praise God, who is justice, justice, this is like the name of Justice. Justice. Shalabalabalabalabalabash. Alata salavranda barantos cobrati gebelekash. Now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Salabada nabakada baladosh. Tanam branda gabela nakos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me. Sir, I want to pray for you justice in the name of Jesus Christ I'm just ministering as the Holy Spirit every infirmity plaguing justice in the name of Jesus Christ blood condition let it be healed right now let it be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ a berry I pray for you in Jesus' name that every power of witchcraft tying down your family in the name that is above all names, I declare be free now. Be free now. Be free now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Please help them. Be free now. Be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing light just right here. The power of God is coming on someone just right here. I want you to bring the person out for me. Just right here in front. In front there. Somewhere there. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, we worship you. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, we worship you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Kadosh, we worship you. Let me talk to that woman. That woman, Madam. Hallelujah. You'll be seated shortly. I'm seeing a woman for six years. You've been barren. Six years. One, two, three, four, five. Exactly six years. 
please don't come out if six years who is that six years i want to pray for you six years merciful god six years my sister is it husband and wife where is your wife Wife, husband and wife yes, and you let me pray for you do you believe in miracles in the name of Jesus Christ by the message of God I speak over you according to the time of life everything that has hindered fertility I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic in the name of Jesus I release you now supernaturally by the power of the help that lady I release you now in the name of Jesus Miracle children by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Ebele, Ebere, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Who works in UBA? United Bank for Africa. UBA. UBA. The Lord is asking me to speak over someone. You walk in UBA. I pray for all of you who are here, who came out by the Spirit, that every oppression over your life, right now, in the name of Jesus, let it come to an end now. I release you. Let doors be open for you now. In Jesus' name. Please return to your seat rejoicing. I want to wrap up very quickly. There's something I want to explain to you. Hallelujah. Don't worry, those who are under the anointing, once they are fine, they can return back. UBA. Who works in UBA? You work in UBA. Where? UBA, at Secretariat. Okay. Because I want to pray. The Lord is asking me to pray for someone who works in UBA. And it's a prayer of restoration and a prayer of increase. These are the two things God is speaking to me about. Do you believe it, my sister? Can I pray that for you? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I don't know what it is that you have lost, but I cry unto my God. May he restore you and may he bring increase to your life. What God says to one, he says to all. May he restore you right now. By the anointing of the Spirit, I release you. Step into a season of restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a man of God. Well, we'll have the time to pray for you tomorrow. But there's a man of God as I'm speaking now. I just saw like a flash of fire. There is a, I don't know where the pastors are seated. But there is a man of God. A strong anointing. Right now as I speak is coming on you. You have prayed and you have fasted. And honestly, there is a hunger in your heart. And this thing is going to be a mighty manifestation of the prophetic and the healing anointing. These two dimensions of grace. Wherever that person is, please help them. I decree and declare right now, let that unction from heaven, it rests upon you. You will never be the same again. May your ministry step into another dimension by the spirit of grace. Please be seated if you can. Give me five minutes. I have to wrap up what I'm teaching. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There are three ways, according to scripture, to enforce judgment upon wicked spirits and satanic manifestations in the life of believers. I want to show you this very quickly tonight. Remember, we excel. Please, if they are still under the anointing, just guide them so that they don't injure themselves. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. For two ladies now shouting loud under the anointing, the Lord is saying, salvation. There's an anointing coming on you. I'm just interpreting to you while you will be shouting. It's not a mechanical thing. Two, loud shout to the hearing of everybody. It's an anointing that is coming. It's not something that is mechanical. And the Lord is saying, salvation comes to your family. Salvation comes to your family.
salvation comes to your family. Loud shout. It's coming on two ladies. So that the things, realities that are finished in Christ, please listen, they become established in the life of the believer when you understand, don't lose everything that I've taught you so far, when you understand and know how to enforce the spiritual resources that have been made available to you in Christ. Are we together? Yes. Yeah, so that access in the spirit does not equal possession. God has given us access to all things, but walking in the experience of dominion, the, the experience of victory, and the experience of fruitfulness demands us knowing and engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. And one of those mysteries is what we have picked tonight, the ability to met out judgment upon wicked spirits. Remember, I told you Satan and all wicked spirits steal, they kill, and they destroy. But that what they steal ultimately is your capacity to understand. This is really what Satan steals. When he steals your capacity to understand, then every other aspect of your life can fall like a pack of cards. Because the mystery that powers all things in your life is your spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. So when God wants to help you beyond restoring health, beyond giving you breakthrough, beyond giving you prosperity, what God really corrects to help you is your spiritual understanding. Are we together now? Yes. So three ways to enforce judgment. Number one, the first way according to scripture that we en enforce judgment over Satan and over all wicked spirits is by engaging in spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is the number one biblical pathway of establishing victory and establishing the judgment that has already been passed over Satan and all wicked spirits. What is spiritual warfare? Please look at me. Spiritual warfare refers to the art of establishing the victory that is finished in Christ over Satan and all demon spirits in the place of prayer. Taking advantage of the resources of the blood, the name, the word, to establish the victory that is already wrought in Christ on account of his substitutionary sacrifice. Spiritual warfare is not engaging in a battle hoping to see if you will win. That is a poor orientation. The basis of the believer's victory is that you are echoing victory that has already been wrought in Christ. Are we together? So the way it works is that realities are first finished in the spirit and then enforced in your life by engaging these mysteries. Spiritual warfare. The Bible tells us that we war. Our warfare is not against flesh and against blood. Ephesians chapter 6, you find that from verse 11 down to verse 18. We don't have the time to read it, but write it for reference. Ephesians 6, 11 to 18. Paul himself tells us that our wrestle is not against flesh and blood. That means our wrestle is not against your director. Your wrestle is not against your husband or your wife. It's not against your child. They are just human actors. The real contention is in the realm of the spirit. Something is making your husband behave that way. Your wife behave that way. Your child behave that way. Your director behave that way. Making you yourself behave that way. Are we together? And that when you do not have this intelligence that all things start from the realm of the spirit, the root of every matter, good or bad, is the realm of the spirit. Curses, blessings, increase, stagnation, they are all rooted in the spirit. Are we together? And so you engage in warfare. And you see, warfare is a whole subject. We can spend a whole day dealing with that. But one of the things you need to know is that when you are engaging in spiritual warfare, there are rules of engagement. Everything happens in the realm of the spirit on legal basis. Are we together now? 
when it has to do with the captivity of the believer or the captivity of the saints satan did not steal man's authority it was given to him are we together now when you are stealing and you hear someone coming you run away but if you transacted business with someone even when the owner is coming you don't run because the basis for settling that matter is to go to court is that true so when you are engaging victory you don't just say satan i i leave me alone that doesn't work that way the basis for the believer's victory is the mystery of the blood are we together now yes the blood is the basis for the believer's victory because the blood there is a representation of the life of god the just treated unjustly so that those who are unjust can have can step into his righteousness the blood of god the blood of jesus as it were it is the legal access for making any claims in the spirit on your own righteousness and on account of what you have done or not done it is impossible for you to command any level of victory the basis for the believers victory is the mystery of the blood that was shed for many and I hope you know that in salvation when you get saved there are three things you receive primarily number one you receive the forgiveness of sin number two you receive the imputation of righteousness number three you receive the life of God this is what you receive when you answer the call to make Jesus Lord of your life the forgiveness of sin gives way to you receiving the imputation of God's righteousness and then the life of God so you engage in warfare most believers do not pray they do not engage in strategic prayer one of the reasons why we were given the prayer language of the spirit in addition to our personal edification is because we are limited in understanding the Bible says for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to are we together yes that we are limited the Bible says we have an infirmity that infirmity is not sickness the infirmity is limitation in knowledge that when you are assessing situations carnally chances are excellent that your assessment will fall short of what is actually wrong and so you were given the advantage of the prayer language and that in praying in the spirit the holy spirit is able to make intercession for you accurately consistent with the will of god that when a man begins to pray in the spirit the holy spirit is given the liberty through your prayer to search the mind of the father and to know the things that are apportioned for your prophetic destiny and he can schedule that even through your prayer when believers do not pray they remain victims your prayer is releasing your will to participate with the word of god to participate with prophecy to participate with the holy spirit in establishing your victory someone shout i receive the grace to pray say it again i receive the grace to pray by this declaration every attack on your prayer life in the name of Jesus it dies tonight I say to you again every attack on your prayer life dies tonight in Jesus name so number one warfare very quickly let me just point out two. the second mystery that enforces judgment is the mystery of praise with understanding praise with understanding psalm 149 from verse 6 to 9 let the high praises of god be upon their lips and a double-edged sword upon their hands to execute vengeance upon their nobles to bind their kings with fetters of iron to execute the judgment that is written there is judgment that is written but that that execution happens in the atmosphere of praise at midnight the bible says paul and silas they prayed and then they sang loud enough the bible did not say all those in the prison sang only two people sang the rest had but when the victory came everybody in the prison benefited from it in the presence of praise there are victories that extend beyond you that everyone connected to you can be beneficiaries of your praise i will call upon the lord he says who is worthy of praise he says so by that formula of prayer and praise shall i be saved from my enemies 
in second chronicles 20 from verse 22 and 23 you know that story the story of jehoshaphat the bible says they were given an instruction to shelve their swords and to allow the praisers to be in front and they lifted up incense of praise saying you are good and your mercies endure forever the bible says as they raised it there was an ambushment against the adversary that they began to kill themselves until the last person helped to kill the other person and when they came they found dead bodies with treasures only fools go to war carrying treasures are we together so number one warfare number two praise let me tell you the truth Praise is a deep mystery in the kingdom. When you sing and engage in praise with understanding. He inhabits the praises of pe people but he goes up, he rises in the praise of God's people. And enforces the judgment that is written. Number three, and this is where we end for tonight. The third mystery that enforces judgment is called obedience second corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. <laughs> obedience is beyond an action obedience is a mystery it allows for certain things to happen upon the earth and having a readiness the bible says to revenge having a readiness to judge to revenge how many disobedience all all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled you can pray you can praise but if you walk in disobedience Satan still has a loophole to your life and the strength of obedience is knowledge of the ways of God if you do not even know what God demands you will not be able to obey obedience is powerful every miracle in the Bible that I have read except the miracle of raising of the dead answered directly to obedience if it be thou bid me come he said come he never said peter come he said come anybody who obeyed if he mentioned a name then it will be disobedience to any other person but he said come like he's telling you to come to a higher level he didn't put a name there come blessed is the man that god causes to approach him that he's made it possible for you to be here. It is God beckoning on you to come. Are we together now? I have watched this in my own life. I have watched this in the life of many in life and in ministry. The mystery of warfare. Some of you need to go back home. And you see, what gives value to your prayer? Maybe tomorrow we'll have a bit of time to talk on that. What gives value to your prayer? It's not just the energy dissipated. It's the spiritual intelligence that backs up your prayer. You can pray energetically but in ignorance. Are we together now? What gives value to prayer is the word compliancy of your prayer. When prayer is fervent, it means your zeal and your heart and your energy is invested into it. But when prayer is effectual, it means that it is consistent with the will of God and the Bible says this is the confidence we have in him that when we ask anything but according to his will we know this is our confidence that he heareth us engage in warfare engage in praise engage in obedience in a delight somewhere like Mary said in John chapter 2 whatsoever he says to do do it do it if he says be diligent to increase then be diligent if he says there is seed that scattered to increase then obey are we together now yeah. if he says righteousness exalts then obey if he says see it thou a man diligent he shall not stand before mean men then if you are tired of standing before mean men engage the law of diligence Desiring demons to obey and respect you when perpetually living in disobedience is a total waste of time. The force that releases angelic activities, the force that releases the power of God is obedience. Whatsoever he says to do, do. Can we rise up and pray for one minute?
just for one minute i'd like you to pray and cry turn these three keys to prayer i obtain grace to engage in prayer i obtain grace go ahead and pray but thou O oh lord and a shield for me my glory you lift my head are you praying but thou O oh lord are a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head but thou O oh lord are a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord art a shield for me you're my glory the lifter up of my head my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head someone is praying you're my glory the lifter up of my head lifter up of my head the lifter up of my head you're the lifter up of my head the lifter up of my head you're the lifter up of my head the grace to pray engaging the word in prayer warding of the arsenals of darkness engaging the blood for the establishment of my victory engaging the word engaging the name warding of the forces assigned against your relevance your influence like a carpenter tearing down the horns that have lifted up their heads against judah against jerusalem against israel so that no man don't lift up his head You're the lifter up of my head. Obtain grace to praise. Obtain grace to praise. Ah, I said, though the leaf does not wither, and there be not olive on the vine, he said, yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. He's called the God of my salvation. The God of my salvation. Finally, obtain grace to obey grace to be obedient grace to walk in obedience grace to be obedient having the readiness to revenge to judge obedience is a weapon it can judge darkness obedience is a weapon hallelujah praise the name of the lord my time is up my apologies please give me two minutes let me make an altar call before I get back to my seat. I have to make an altar call. Please look at me. When I began my discussion, I told us that salvation is the only gateway to transit from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. You can receive a miracle saved or not. You can receive breakthrough saved or not. But the the legitimacy that Satan has over your life is officially broken at the point Jesus becomes Lord of your life. Among the thousands of people scattered here inside and outside and the many following online, I want you to give me the honor tonight in the next one minute to lead you to this Jesus, the one for whom we are gathered here tonight. And there's no point cajoling, there's no point lying to yourself. You have the power to use your will and say apostle i'm ready to win the war of my destiny now i'm going to count one to five from the back to the front left to the right you want to make jesus lord of your life or rededicate your life i want you to run by the count of five please be standing here i begin my counting now let's honor them as they come one is this the best that you can do celebrating salvation two clapping they are coming I see people coming right from the back God bless you 
God bless you my sister God bless you my brother it's a new season no matter how dark no matter how bad things have been Jesus is able to give you a new beginning keep clapping they're coming three four if you're coming from behind could you double up we have just a few seconds Potakot, is this how you celebrate salvation? Out of her now in Jesus' name. All right, please come. God bless you. Please come. Please come. Now, I'm going to lead you to pray. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. The call to make Jesus Lord of your life and your response to that call is the wisest decision you can ever make in this side of God's kingdom. Some of you are making this call for the very first time. I presume that some of you are saying, I really want to rededicate my life. It doesn't matter. And perhaps you are seated and you are saying, Apostle, can I join them? I don't even know if I'm saved or not. Join them. You can have the assurance of salvation tonight. I want to thank you, my dear brothers and sisters. And let me also speak to someone who is following online. Distance is no barrier, especially when it has to do with making Jesus Lord of your life. So as I lead God's precious people here in Portaco to make this decision, I want you to follow through and make that decision too. Lift your right hand high above your head and I want you to say this, let it be from the depth of your heart. Say Lord Jesus. One more time, say Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight, I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. These ones have come declaring your lordship over their lives. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Bona fide recipients of the life of God. The grace to live and walk in victory. Let it be released upon you now. You go from glory to glory. In Jesus name I pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. Here's what I want you to do for me everyone. Please look at me. Um, counselors can you wave your hands. Let me see you. Okay. So we have uh, some of our uh, counselors. They are waving their hands. Please may I request that all of you in concert. I would request that you move to my left. That will be your right. Uh, and then they will have a word and a quick prayer with you and then you'll be back to join the service let's honor them as they go keep clapping until they leave keep clapping let's celebrate salvation hallelujah hallelujah so here's what will happen let me encourage you um, tomorrow I want to lend my voice with your pastor to encourage you uh, we will we'll save the prayer for the sick and every other ministration will let, we'll let that be for tomorrow um, but then I want to encourage you invite everybody around this city if there's no space they can sit on the roof Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together now? So, make sure that you invite everyone. Tell them the Lord is moving mightily. And um, can I make a request that the people come with their prayer request tomorrow? Will that be fine, sir? Okay. Praise God. Now, here's what, thank God I have the permission of your pastor as you're coming tomorrow, I want you to write everything you are tired of. 
that has mocked God over your life. And for your loved ones who may not be able to make it, and I wonder why they should not be here, but if for any reason they are not here, please receive their request. We'll collate everything, and tomorrow let the God that answers by fire. God, by his mercy, will be bringing an end to anything that looks like calamity. But for now, I speak over your life. For many of you, before the sun rises in the morning, in the name of Jesus, your testimony would have arrived. The testimony of the wonder-working power of God. I declare age-long captivities that have tied your life, tied your family, tied your loved ones. In the name of Jesus, you are released from them now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will hear good news from every quarter. In the mighty name of Jesus, for your sake I declare, let the book of remembrance be opened. That they that have forgotten you by the influence of the Spirit, and in the name of Jesus Christ, they will rush to help you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise and all the glory. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.